Welcome to Church Chat with Monsignor Chido, hosted by me, Father Dolan. I'm having a little trouble with the camera today, but we'll do the best we can with the technology we have. Monsignor. Welcome to all of you to Church Chat. We uh, welcome you to the sanctuary here at uh, St. Anthony's. We have uh, in the church in order that we might glorify the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament as we have our little chat together. Last uh, session, we discussed the history of the Catholic Church here at St. Anthony's um, by way of looking at the different pastors who have served uh, the parish at St. Anthony's. And we started, of course, with the great Francesco Vittorio Romanelli, who founded the parish in 1906, and we went on to Father Noonan, Father McGinnis, and the great Father Lally, who was pastor here for 28 years. And we'd like to, uh, to conclude our, our history of St. Anthony's to, the day, to date by looking at some of the other pastors briefly uh, to point out what uh, some of the features were that uh, uh, highlight who uh, they were and who they mm -hmm. are uh, and who they've been to the great St. Anthony's Parish. The successor to Father Lally, Monsignor Lally, was a man by the name of Father John Clark. Uh, he was just here from 1955 to 59 as the administrator. He was kind of a transition man from uh, Father Lally to uh, Monsignor Schmitz. And uh, he held the reins very tightly and uh, continued to emphasize the importance of Catholic education during his time here as administrator. Uh, following uh, Father John Clark was the great Monsignor Peter Nicholas Schmitz. I must admit he's one of my heroes. Uh, Monsignor Schmitz was a pastor during uh, much of my childhood and uh, in high school and was an inspiration to me uh, in terms of vocation to the priesthood. Monsignor was very much devoted to the Blessed Sacrament, he had a great devotion to it and promoted uh, uh, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and a, a firm attention to the details of the sacred liturgy. Uh, he was made a Monsignor while he was here at St. Anthony's and uh, Monsignor uh, left in 1968, having come in 1959. So I'm very uh, indebted to Monsignor Peter Schmitz, and uh, I'll never forget. Do you have any uh, personal stories about Monsignor Schmitz? Well, Monsignor Schmitz, Schmitz was, sure. uh, was the pastor during my high school years when I served here as uh, sacristan. We uh, took care of the sacristy and the vestments and so forth uh, during uh, those four years of high school. We used to come here, a bunch of us, uh, three or four of us, Mike Bonk, Charlie Alvarado, Anthony Quinn, mm -hmm. to sell out the vestments and uh, to take care of everything on Saturday and preparing for the Sunday liturgies. And uh, he used to take us in his camper and uh, we'd go down to Lake Aquabi and uh, spend time down there fishing and so mm -hmm. forth. He was a great outdoorsman. And that uh, was <laughs> very supportive and encouraging. And I have so many anecdotes and so many fond memories of Monsignor Schmitz. The next man is uh, a man by the name of Gerald Stessman. Uh, Father Stessman came in 1969 and left, or rather he was pastor, co-pastor from 1969 to 1972, along with Father Benedict Kinkle, who came in 1968 to 1979. He was assistant under Father uh, Schmitz, Monsignor mm -hmm. Schmitz, and served as co-pastor uh, with Father Kinkle for a few years. Father Stessman was an inspiration to me as well. Uh, very devout, uh, very gentle, a very gracious and committed priest uh, whom uh, I'll remember very fondly uh, having served Mass for him so many times. He was a very dignified mm -hmm. uh, man, and a very soft-spoken man, but a very great priest, Father Stessman. I got to know him pretty well also growing up a little bit in my high school years mm -hmm. after he had retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was originally from Erling, Iowa, the town where I was last assigned. Yeah, and right. so I got to know uh, some of his family and um, got to be very aware of his graciousness. Mm -hmm. Next man is uh, Father Benedict J. Kinkle from 1968 to 1979. Ironically, another person from Erling, Iowa. Yeah, Father Kinkle... Uh, was pastor during my seminary years mm -hmm. and uh, was a tremendous support and encouragement to, uh, to me in my seminary years. He made sure that when I was home for holidays that I would be on the altar, that I would serve. He would write me letters, mm -hmm. uh, inviting me home, uh, very gracious, very generous, take me out to dinner and so forth, very much encouraging me to continue along the path with the priesthood. Uh, he was here when I had my first assignment at Christ the King, which is just south of here. So we worked closely uh, in the Des Moines Southside region at that time. 
And uh, mm-hmm. he left in 1979 at the same time I left Christ the King. And he went to, um, I think he went to uh, St. Peter's in Council Bluffs. Okay. And uh, I went on to, uh, to uh, St. Albert's in Council Bluffs. So we were left here and went both to Council Bluffs. And uh, I helped him there, Father Kinkle at uh, St. Peter's there on Sunday Masses and so forth. And um, became a close friend of his. And when I came, went back to Omaha in, the, in the 2000, he, uh, 2001, he uh, helped me out. He was retired and helped me out there at St. Thomas More with Masses and, and, the, and uh, uh, the, uh, Home for the Aged there, mm-hmm. he, uh, Senior Citizen Center, he helped with masses there. He uh, was a very good friend, and uh, I became very close to him through the years, and he just died just about a year or so ago. And he was a genius of a man, a great mathematician, a great, great uh, man of the economy. Mm-hmm. He knew how to, to uh, economize. In fact, they used to say it was so tight he could squeeze a buffalo off, off a nickel. <laughs> and they used to nickname him Buff Kinkle. Mm-hmm. And Buff he, Kinkle. Yeah, Buff Kinkle in honor of the buffalo on the nickel. And he uh, he was a wonderful man, and uh, I'm sorry to have seen him die during the last several years. <laughs> His great mind uh, was fogged with Alzheimer's. So when you visit him, a lot of times he wouldn't even recognize you, which is very tragic and very sad. But a very great man who did a lot to build up the, the financial resources of St. Anthony's mm-hmm. in support of the school as well as the, as well as the parish and was renowned for his uh, fundraising efforts and were very successful and uh, a very good priest, a very devout one. And the next uh, priest who followed Father Kinkle was Father Jerry Ryan, whom I had in high school mm-hmm. in uh, Latin class, and he came here to St. Anthony's and was um, a very gregarious, outgoing, friendly, uh, positive sort of priest that uh, built up a lot of social events here in the parish. He had a number of auctions that were very popular that he got a lot of people to uh, donate a lot of things for the auction mm-hmm. and uh, was very popular among so many people here at St. Anthony's 1979 <laughs> to 1989 Father mm-hmm. Jerry Ryan. The next priest was uh, a homegrown priest uh, by the name of Father Nilo Lito. He was a, a son of St. Anthony's, he was born and raised here at St. Anthony's. His father built the nativity scene that we mentioned a couple of times ago. Father Lito was just here for a couple of years from 89 to 92 and uh, and tried to do a lot to the fabric of the church, renovating it and so forth, mm-hmm. and uh, doing some repair <laughs> that was long needed. And uh, having been a, a homegrown son of the parish, uh, it made his it made his very heartfelt contribution to the life of St. Anthony. Mm-hmm. And then moved on just after a few years, Father Neil Alito. In fact, he's still alive. Is it difficult to be a native son and pastor of St. Anthony's? I will get to that when I get to me. <laughs> the next priest is Monsignor uh, Lawrence Beeson, who was here from 1992 to 1993 in a transition after uh, Father Lido, and uh, <clears throat> during that year held the reins and uh, passed on uh, the, the rich tradition of St. Anthony's uh, to the next pastor and uh, did a lot to, to uh, keep secure and in place the vitality of not just the parish but the school and uh was a great a great priest and he helps every now and then here at St. Anthony's mm-hmm. and Monsignor Beast is a, a great uh, supporter of St. Anthony's to this day. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Next priest is Father Larry Hoffman, Lawrence Hoffman. He um uh, Shelby County man yes. who uh, was here from nineteen ninety three to two thousand and three. Uh, and Father Hoffman <clears throat> uh, was um known for his being e- uh, easygoing and kind of <laughs> laid back. He's a very laid back man. But, uh, you know, held, held tight to uh, the reins of St. Anthony's and uh, guided it to some, some difficult times, like all of the priests, but also some very good, good times. And uh, people still have a great fondness for Father Hoffman and they call him back for weddings and baptisms mm-hmm. and so forth because he endeared himself to many, many people. And then my immediate predecessor, Father Ray Higgins. Uh, Father Ray was here from 2003 to 2007 as pastor. He had served here <clears throat> as an associate pastor years before. Father Ray uh, has a great uh, personality and is known as uh, fun-loving and upbeat and positive. Uh, he did a tremendous amount to the inside of the church. He uh, had the famous the, dome. Had the famous dome uh, mural painted. He uh, had this altar built here 
and moved the high altar back to its original place and painting the murals of St. Anthony around the sanctuary as well as so many other things that, that um, beautified the church. He had and has a great love for the sacred liturgy and uh, does anything he can to promote the beauty of God's house. Mm-hmm. And so that's the uh, history of St. Anthony's by way of the pastors and each one of them had a positive contribution to make and all of St. Anthony's owes a great debt of gratitude to each and every one of them because we wouldn't be today the parish we are without the hard work and sacrifices of so many of of these priests throughout the years. So I uh, just want to encourage you there at home to uh, pray a word of a prayer of thanksgiving for for these great priests. Many of them have gone gone to uh, to their eternal reward, and uh, we want to to say on behalf of all of St. Anthony's parishioners, living and dead, that uh, they were wonderful priests and uh, richly deserve the reward of paradise for what they have done, not just for St. Anthony's, but for all the parishes that they served throughout that many years. It's important to pray for our priests, living and dead. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't always realize that this is a hard life. Mm-hmm. And you look and like so I, I, I succeeded Father Ray in, in 2007 and been here since then. Uh, it's, it's a great uh, privilege to serve the parish that grew up in and uh, has its own unique challenges because you, you know the history of the parish mm-hmm. and you are a part of the history of the parish. And, uh, and it's, it's been a great challenge, uh, but a great privilege uh, to serve the people of, of my own, own parish. And so fond of saying that I'm not just a pastor, I'm a parishioner. I am one with the people in a unique way because this is my home and these are my, these are my people and to call St. Anthony's my family parish is, is no exaggeration. I was baptized in that font, received Holy Communion at that rail and uh, was ordained, said my first Mass here, uh, celebrated my 25th anniversary here at this altar and the 40th anniversary at this altar and now serving as, as the pastor. I uh, went to my first confession in the confessional, sat in these pews during many years of the grade school mm-hmm. when we'd come every day for Mass and worked our way from first grade all the way to the back in eighth grade, mm-hmm. serving Mass at uh, so many different hours here at the altar uh, during my grade school, high school, and seminary years. All of these are great treasures and great memories uh, for which I'm very grateful. Sometimes people ask, like the president, uh, which of his predecessors he feels like he emulates. And um, interesting enough, Barack Obama said he felt a, a kinship to Nixon. Um, I was wondering if you feel a particular uh, kin or friendship spiritually with I've always one felt, of your predecessors. I've always felt a, a, a deep kinship with Peter Schmitz. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was pastor during my grade school, latter years in high school. and. Uh, was a wonderful inspiration for the the appreciation that we all ha- need to have, especially as priests, for the for the liturgy and for the mass. And uh, all of them contributed, even the ones that I never knew, you know, Romanelli and mm-hmm. Lally and so forth. All of them, in their own unique way, have had an impact and an influence on me. Mm-hmm. As I got to know them and got to know the contribution that they made, and the foundation that they laid and built upon, I've always felt. Uh, a great challenge to build on their, their foundation and not to not to pull it up or dismantle it, but to build on it because all of them contributed something from Romanelli all the way to today mm-hmm. uh, to the greatness of this parish. It was uh, one of the first parishes in the city of Des Moines. I think it was number three, Visitation, St. Ambrose and St. Anthony, and then St. John's. So it's been around a while and had a great... Uh, a great ride throughout the hundred and some years uh, of its history. Mm-hmm. Well, this is Father Dolan and Monsignor Chido here with uh, Church Chat, and we want to thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye now, and God love you, <laughs> as Bishop Sheen would say. Indeed. <laughs>